Hello everyone, my name is Uthers and welcome back to Space Engineers, where we are working on our pseudo survival creative series. And last episode we built our lift down into our hangar bay. And I think people thought it was a little slow for what it really did. So I am going to show you guys, I increased the speed a little bit, made it a little bit more flush as well to the surface. But you will see as soon as I get down here. There we go. Make sure to engage that. Turn off your inertial dampeners when you get on this thing, by the way. You don't want your dampeners to fight the lift itself. You can see we uh, go down much quicker, which is nice. And then if I turn on inertial dampeners again and lift off a little bit, there we go, and just fly in. You can see how well it works. And you can see how quickly it closes behind us now. Uh, I've increased the velocity, I think, instead of a half to a one. So it's pretty much twice as fast as last time. So it, uh, it increases security as well. Oh, I don't want to crash this into the outpost. Forget how drifty this thing is. It makes me think of Elite Dangerous when we were on the planets a little bit. But this episode, we're not going to be working on the base per se, we will be working on a new vehicle, ground-based. Um, it's not a vehicle per se either, it is more of a, an attachment to our first rover here. So our first scout rover, which is pretty cool and versatile, you know, uh, you can get around fairly quickly in it to scout. I was thinking that the ship, where is it, there it is. Uh, the small utility ship is nice, and it can mine, yes, but it's not good for, I guess, uh, you could say, long mining missions, or getting started, or things like that. It's, that's actually kind of more advanced, because it's running on reactors and things. And some people wanted a little bit more of a ground-based mining vehicle, and so this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a ground-based mining vehicle. It's going to have two modes. It's going to have a vertical mining mode, and then also, hopefully... A horizontal mining mode. That's the plan. I don't know if I'm going to be able to achieve said plan. But. Essentially. We will uh, try our best. At getting this to work. So it's going to be running off pistons. Of course. And I need a angle of lock here. Of course, I can never place things where I want to. That's okay. We, we can make do. So you can see it's going to be, hopefully, a long trailer kind of segment that's attached on this thing. And the reason I have multiple connectors all right here is because I want to be able to transfer cargo and leave the trailer if necessary and then come back to it. And so, the pivot point of our drill is going to be somewhere in the middle, of course. And when it collapses back down, I want it to use connectors. One, to hold it in place. Two, to transfer cargo from the drill into our little LAV. All our LRV. So, it's a recon vehicle. It's not, it's not assault. I need to stop saying LAV. And so that's why we are going with this kind of shape. And then it's gonna have a connector in the back as well. Actually, it can't if I wanna use it uh, as a drill to do horizontal, so it won't actually connect anywhere. So that's why it needs to transfer cargo into our little ship. If that makes any sense. I hope it makes sense. But it will be run on pistons, of course, which can transfer cargo. And I don't know kind of the length that I want to use. I think four pistons in total in length. I, I need to do some testing, I think, on how far that extends out. Let's uh, turn off symmetry mode real quick. Is it in? Yes. Cool. Don't want to leave trash bits behind. 
And you can see it's kind of heavy, so I'll have to delete that and add some back wheels or something to keep it up in the air. Let's go ahead and use this piston. Now, I want the velocity to be, to be rather slow. Uh, I'm talking one... One to point two, because if this is all going at once, then... Okay. Okay, for some reason it reversed. Maybe because I actually changed the velocity and I wasn't looking at where it was. There we go. So it's, it's kind of like a spring. Um, and it extends. To a decent height, I have to say. That's a, that's a good length. It's very proportional to the overall length of the craft. And I'll have to somehow put it on a hinge that can go vertical and horizontal and lock it in place on certain degrees to actually do some mining. So this is going to be a little bit more of a technical build than normal. I don't usually get quite so in-depth with it. Because really, you don't gain a whole lot by doing in-depth building in space engineers. So most of the time, simple is better. Uh, like, for example, most most of the time, if you just have a square ship with a whole bunch of missile pods, you'll be a really nice-looking ship that, yes, it's realistic, but it doesn't really function in the game world quite as well. So let's... I need to actually drag that back out. So that we get the length returned. And I may need to temporarily put some new wheels on it. I like these wheels as, uh, in my opinion, they're kind of the most proportional wheels to have. Uh, let's change some settings so those wheels stay strong and stiff. So it's these ones. And if we do that, uh, suspension travel is zero. There we go. Oh, these, <laughs> this one's upside down. That's, that's silly. That's silly. Let's not do it like that. They need to be facing the same direction if they need to function the same. I usually put the little piston thing on the top side. So this one's holding fine. In fact, it's not even on the... Oh, because it's one higher than normal. I have to change that as well. Got to make sure things are all level. So let's pop that down there. Come on. Give me a good deal. Ah, uh, the wheel cannot be placed. Ah. No, there we go. I was in the way of it. Alright. And now I can adjust those settings again. So, here we go. Height offset. Boop. Trap. Suspension travel zero. Play that, then break anything by doing that. There we go. That's a nice sturdy frame for now. I'm going to go ahead and make some progress, try and work out some details, and we'll be back, of course, periodically to show you progress as progress is made. Okay, so currently I have installed our rotors uh, using kind of the same trick that we use to connect pistons together. You can use the same with rotors, so you can actually use a merge block, align them, and then build upon them so you can connect multiple rotors at once. Now, getting them to line up, because they're technically inverted. One's going in a negative direction, while one's going in a positive direction. It's a little finicky, and that took me actually a really long time to figure out, because I don't really deal with rotors. Hardly at all. 
But what I do deal with are these drills. And if I come over here, we just popped on our drill. And I can lower our mechanism down. As you're gonna see, it actually moves. It's relatively smooth, which is nice. Gravity does assist it on the way down, I'm sure. And then it drops level automatically. These line up perfectly. There is also a large cargo container just for extra, I guess you could say. If anything spills over, um, and also it makes it look a little bit more industrial, which is pretty cool. It does ride relatively low to the ground, which is a little bit of concern, but that's why we have double piping. I'm gonna go ahead and test to see if this thing grazes back up. It does. It can fight gravity, which is great. Now we're gonna be controlling our drill outside. We'll have some outside buttons, at least that's in the plan. And I believe some landing gear to keep everything kind of locked in place. Now this obviously works best on flat terrain. Um, the other feature though, since we will have kind of a tilted down version where the drill can extend horizontal, um, again, you want a flat terrain on that, or maybe a slight slope, but this thing's going to be heavy. Uh, I have a feeling the brakes are going to be a little bit of a problem, but I can have downward facing landing gear for sure to counteract uh, the torque and things like that to kind of anchor us down once needed. So I'll be back with another update, even though it actually might end up being the final version. I don't know how long it will take, but this is a pretty nice kind of folded up design. Uh, that I'm working on. I'm just kind of winging it. I don't even know if this is the best design. So, yeah, I'll be back. So, uh, just got done testing the first kind of drill. Everything worked decently enough. Um, what? Okay. No, please don't do that. Just please don't. Nope, it's gonna... Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, no. Hmm. Space engineers. Where physics just breaks down. Okay, guys. So, here we are. This is uh, the current state of our, uh, I guess, mining attachment to our rovers. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna have to probably redesign a decent amount of it. I'm gonna turn on my lights because it's actually becoming nighttime on my save so um yeah anyways uh we have our drill you know uh we got our awesome four wheels we have four anchor kind of landing gear and we have a whole bunch of control buttons on the side so essentially they're kind of in the order that you would naturally press them uh, the first being that you want to lower the legs down on your landing gear here and that will actually lift the whole thing off the ground just a, just a little bit, just so the wheels are disengaged. And then you'll want to lock those in place. And at this time, you want to probably raise up the drill into its vertical, vertical position. And then, once that kind of settles down for a second, we will turn on the drill. Now, I, des I split the... Uh, shaft into two controls because if they were all active at once the drill would go down too quickly and essentially crush the drill and destroy itself so that's not what we want um so right now it kind of goes down a little bit you want to keep an eye on your legs they're kind of your measuring stick here of if you're having too much pressure downwards at once you will have to kind of fiddle back and forth with the actual drill bit going up and down as we uh, just get deeper and deeper into the crust. Now, the downside about this being a small ship is that the, the drill doesn't go very far. Um, it probably only goes about 20 meters at that, which is really net impressive. 
but I think at this point I'll just go ahead and stop the drill, reverse everything up. Uh, this last button here is our lights. Uh, I do have, you know, a couple little flashing red lights and then our forward facing lights if we are drilling in that direction. And hopefully this thing doesn't tear itself apart. It likes to do that after it's done mining anything. Um, you can see we haven't really made much progress, but I wasn't really pushing it as hard as it normally can go uh, for fear of it just kind of flying off and exploding. Uh, let's go ahead and lower this back down. And then this final button here will actually lock those in place. I can actually access the inventory here, unload the stone if needed. And then I can unlock the legs, lower the legs, and it's back into a transport kind of mode. So uh, that's pretty much it for this vehicle. Um, it's really not very functional, uh, the more I think about it. It's probably just faster to dig by hand or use the other ship, but it was pretty fun. Uh, it was a little bit of a thought challenge for me because I've never really built anything like this before. If you guys enjoyed the episode, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more creative goodness. If you guys have anything uh, you would like me to build next, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll see about doing that. I'll go ahead and check out my other videos and I'll see you guys in the next episode.